Hi, my name is Kathy. Um, I just wanted to kind of break down the fluid and electrolytes. Hopefully this helps you. Um, I tried to make a little story to go with each one so we could kind of, you know, help us to remember to put it together. Uh, first, we got to get through the first video, which kind of gives, you know, the overview of the cell at the cellular level so we can kind of understand what's going on there. Uh, you have to keep in mind that first, um, that there are the two thirds of the water is intracellular and, and one third is extracellular. There's more inside the cells fluid than there is outside of the cells because all those cells take up that space. Um, you have a positively or a positive and a negative charge within each cell. Um, the positive is called the cation and the T um, in the cat kind of rem reminds you that that's the plus or that's the positive one. And then you have the anions, not naughty Annie, she's just bad. Um, your, your cations um, you have in your intracell or in your house. Um, you can kind of remember that because, well, the cat, this cat, I have a cat that would just love to smoke pot in the house. Well, you got in the house, you got your cat, so there's your positive. Um, you have a pot, which is your potassium. So, you know, you have, you know, that's the main ingredient in the intracellular one inside the house. That's your intracellular fluid. That's your main, that's your main ingredient in that one. And Annie, uh, which is a dog, um, Annie just loves to pee in, sh sh pee, you know, S-H-I-T in, in the house. Well, obviously that's negative. So, battle Annie likes to uh, pee in S in the house, well that would be your phosphorus and your sulfate. So there's your negative. So that's your biggest negative charge. Okay, outside of the fluid is, is uh, that's one third of your makeup. So again, you need to remember it has a positive and a negative charge. The biggest component outside of the cell, you can remember it because we used to have a cat that loved to lick the salt thing that we put out for the deers. So it, outside of the house. So it loved that salt, it loved that sodium. So you have the cat and the sodium outside of the house licking that salt liquor or whatever that deer thing, whatever they called it, whatever it was, that, that salt thing. Um, you have anions, which is your negative charge and the most component of that outside of your house. Well, Annie hates that chlorinated pool. So she hates that chloride, so you know it's a negative because she hates it. She hates the chloride, the chlorine in the pool, which you remember that is chloride. And obviously the most of the time your pools are outside of your house. Okay, diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of molecules and of the uh, from an area that's more concentrated to an area that's less concentrated because it wants to spit out those molecules to kind of even, even it out so it's got a, uh, an even form all the way across. Well then you have your facilitated diffusion. Well remember that you know sometimes you know people need facilitators, they need helpers. So um, the ones that are going to need help is that old owl that likes that glucose. So your albumin and glucose are going to need helpers. They're going to need facilitated diffusion to get across that membrane. They're going to need a little help because they're too fat. Um, your osmosis is the simple movement of water, not the molecules. So you think of it opposite as the diffusion, whereas your osmosis is an area that's more, that, I'm sorry, is a movement from the water of an area that's less concentrated or more watery to an area that is more concentrated. So again, the same thing happens. This area that has more water is going to an area that's more concentrated and then it's going to kind of bounce out. Okay. All right, now you have three different types of fluids. You have your isotonics, your hypotonics, and your hypertonic solution. And we can go over those briefly and kind of get those straight in your head. You have your isotonic solutions, which uh, that's going to be just your fluid replacement. Um, and that's going to be for, um, you're going to use that for fluid volume deficit. 
fluid replacement for fluid, de fluid volume deficits. Those are going to be your uh, kind of your neutral solutions, like your normal saline, um, your um, 0.09 normal saline, and you'll just have to remember that your lactated ringers and your D5 normal saline. Your hypotonic solutions are going to be um, when they have wimpy cells and they need to be reinflated. Uh, for those you're going to use, uh, this is more for dehydration. So you're going to, um, those, wells, those cells are going to be kind of wilty. So you're going to have to rehydrate those cells. So with those you're going to use um, D5W, W for wimpy. Um, you're going to use those less than 9% or 0.9% solutions, which are going to be your fraction ones like your half and your quarter normal saline. Your hypertonic solutions are real thick and gunky. They're full of sugar, so you have to be real careful. It's used to treat people often with uh, hypoglycemia, so you need to kind of keep that in mind, um, which kind of makes sense. They have hypoglycemia, so what are you going to use? You're going to use uh, you're going to give them something that's going to have a bunch of sugar in it to kind of uh, balance that out. Again, because hypo and hyper kind of balance it out when you go together, and then you got a nice, nice clean uh, slate. Um, okay, let's go over fluid volume deficit and fluid volume excess, and then that'll be it for this video, and then I'll start out on the next video. Uh, your fluid volume deficit, are, um, that's going to be your water loss and um, electrolyte loss. Um, so your fluid volume deficit, you have to remember that's different from dehydration. Dehydration is just water loss. Your fluid volume deficit is your water and your electrolyte loss. The, um, the signs and symptoms of that, you're going um, to have fluid loss. You're going to have weight loss. Um, you're going to have thirsty because you're going to have more, you're going to have, it's going to be more concentrated solution. So you're going to have that thirst, unless you're old, it's not going to, it's not going to make you thirsty. Um, or it can not make you thirsty. If you're, if you're dehydrated or if you just kind of don't have enough fluids in you, you're going to be thirsty. You could have flat ne neck veins, which honestly, don't we all have flat neck veins? I mean, mine don't stick out to yours, but anyway, whatever. Um, if it's an infant, they might have the uh, font nail sunken in and just look really just pitiful and lethargic looking. Uh, you might be cold and clammy. Um, your, your, um, remember that your BUN and your hematocrit is going to be increased with this, and that's going to be your big telltale lab sign. And um, so your fluid volume deficit will have an increased hematocrit and hemoglobin unless when else could, you know, unless it's from blood loss, then obviously their hemoglobin is going to be down. They're going to, they're going to need uh, probably blood replacement or something to help bring them up. Um, so how are you going to treat people with fluid volume deficit? Well, you're going to give them fluids, right? Um, for these people there, um, you're going to give them your Pedialyte for children, your Gastrolytes for adults. Um, you're going to give them isotonic solutions to kind of fluff them up, maybe something with a little bit of chloride, like sodium chloride in there, lactated ringers. Um, you have to be real careful when you're, when you're giving them uh, fluid volume replacement therapy if they have a uh, heart failure, because um, you got to be careful about those patients. You can put them into fluid overload. Um, you, so in addition to their BUN and hematocrit being increased, um, if they've lost fluid, what's going to be real concentrated, right? Their urine's going to be real concentrated. So you're going to expect, you know, to see uh, your, the darker urine. Um, your nursing management, well, your best nursing management is going to be uh, daily weights. So you're going to have to weigh them daily and push that bed scale and see if that fluid volume is coming up. But you have to be careful because all of a sudden if they put on five pounds, well, you need to, you know, in a day, you need to listen to their lungs because perhaps they got fluid volume excess now. So you need to, you know, again, so let's move to fluid volume excess. What is that? Your fluid volume excess is um, your best indicator will be your weight gain. Uh, if you're going to have weight gain, you're going to have elevated uh, neck veins, everything's filling up, so you're going to have moist lungs. 
Um, you're going to maybe have shortness of breath. You're going to be wheezing because you're just you can't. You feel like you can't, you know, get a good breath because you're just you're full up. You're full with lungs. So with those patients, you're going to have a decreased BUN and hematocrit. So there's your telltale sign for labs, and uh, there you need to have a chest X-ray on them and make sure they're not filling up. Um, you're going to give them a salt restricted diet. Um, you might need a diuretic to help pull off some of that extra weight that you've caused from giving them too much fluid now. So now you're going to, so then you might have to use a diuretic to pull it back off. Um, keep in mind that if you want to use a diuretic, if you need to use a diuretic, well then you better use, or you better, you better consider which kind you're going to use because your Lasix is going to uh, be a loop diuretic. But you may need to consider a calcium sparing, uh, I'm sorry, a potassium sparing diuretic, which would be your um, spiralactone. Okay. And I think that is it. Somebody from our nursing hall had also put for the lab values to remember, which I thought was kind of cute, a little uh, something she had said. From the to, to align them up from the um, highest to the lowest. And here's a sentence that she had put together. Some children cut potatoes petitely maggy. So um, some is your sodium, and that's 125 to, I'm sorry, 135 to 145. Children is your CH chloride, and that's your 96 to 108. Cut is your calcium. And that's one tenth of that, so or approximately one tenth of that. So you're going to be 8.6 to 10.2, and then everything's going to be below that. So you're going to have your phosphates, which is your 2.5 to 4.5, and your no, I'm sorry, I missed one. It's your potassium, which is your what is potassium? 3.5 to 5. Is that it? 3.5 to 5? Yes. And then you got your other potatoes, or your petitely, which is your phosphatase, and that is your 2.5 to 4.5. And then lastly, you have your maggi, which is your magnesium, which is the lowest one, no lowest number, and that's 1.8 to 2.7. Okay. And then the next video will be about the hyper and hypos.